I used to say, why am I such a freak? Why am I, do you know, why am I so different? I felt odd, I felt bizarre. After I had the diagnosis, within a few months, I felt like, well, this is why, and it's okay. It's okay to be different. So we have conducted an online survey and we've had 67 families take part in that survey. Um, predominantly these have been parent carers, mothers um, of people with Noonan syndrome, but there's also some adults with Noonan syndrome as well who've taken part. And sometimes Noonan syndrome is called the most common rare disease that you've never heard of. And for some people, these medical features of Noonan syndrome can be quite serious, quite severe right from birth. Um, and they can also be life limiting. Some of the most common features of Noonan syndrome are congenital heart disease and short stature, um, so issues with growth and feeding. But there's also lots of other things associated with it that people might experience, such as vision and hearing problems, issues with the lymphatic system, um, with the digestive system, with mobility, with pain. It's associated with specific learning difficulties and disabilities. Um, so the, the effects can be very far reaching. Whereas for some other people, they might not even know they have Noonan syndrome until they've had a child who's more severely affected than they are. And then they go through the process of being genetically diagnosed and then they find out that they, they have this syndrome as well in adulthood. Come on then, this way, good girl, good girl. My name's Andrea Reed Kelly and I have Noonan syndrome. Get it. So I was diagnosed with Noonan syndrome at 16 years old. Um, came as a bit of a ball out of the blue as a result of a chance comment my mum made with a doctor. I was angry about it at first, but then felt very, very empowered by knowing about it and then finding out about how it impacts me and why I am the way I am. Hi mum, you all right? Thank you. Just ringing to ask you a couple of questions about, you know, when I got the diagnosis of Noonan syndrome. Do you remember the day? Yeah. And to ask you about how you felt about it. Very, yeah, very, very well, because it was a, like a relief that somebody had actually put a name to what you'd got or some, you know, the reason that you were short and the reason that you were quite sort of like quite at school when you were younger, you had problems. You know, at the time, um, it was really old-fashioned literature and it was quite gruesome and it was quite negative. Uh, and, you know, I wouldn't bring it home from the hospital. I could have brought it home to show you, but I wouldn't bring it because I didn't want you to be more worried than you already were. So some of the key findings of the report are this general lack of awareness of Noonan syndrome in society more broadly and also in specific groups like medical professionals and educational professionals. Also the impact of caring on parent carers which often goes unrecognised and the fact that many families living with Noonan syndrome can feel isolated and alone and you know would like more spaces for peer support. Hi we're the Faye family, my name's Terry. I'm Karina. And these are our twins. So we have a daughter who's three and a half who has been diagnosed with Noonan syndrome. She was diagnosed when I was 26 weeks pregnant. It, it was very stressful. I mean, we had quite a long journey home that when we found out and it was a case of like, well, we obviously we Googled it and it was quite scary wasn't it? it was quite very stressful. If it had been something like Down syndrome or something like that, it would have still been stressful and scary journey home. but. I think there's a lot more information, like a lot more well known that. Whereas this, we had no clue, we had nothing, no. did we? So we did a first aid course um, for obviously newborn babies, and the lady that took the course actually knew about Noonan. She had a very good connection with Noonans, and that's how we found out about the association. The association yeah. yeah. Once you start connecting and talking to people you will really actually find that it is it is such a wonderful genetic condition. And yes, there are medical conditions oh. with it. Um, and we do have them as well with Matilda. She has a lot of hospital appointments. Overall, she's just an amazing little girl and she's thriving. She's incredible. Yeah, she's incredible. Noonan 
really was Katie's initiative to come forward in, I think it was April 2021 when she first came forward. You know, she is the first person to document it. She is the first person to write it down. And it's so important that that's done because it, she's focusing a bit less on the medical aspects of the condition and a bit more on the social and living aspects. And those are the things that, you know, hitherto people haven't really talked about, but they are incredibly important. You know, how, how, how are people working through this? What, what are the issues that they've got? And it's really, really important that it gets publicized, that medical professionals see it and learn from it. Families see it and learn from it. And most importantly, that the charity has it to say, well, you know, if we can get the money, get the resources, we could do some different things here, maybe change some of the things we're doing and try and try and offer a bit more support in, in other ways. So, you know, hopefully we'll guide the charity a bit. But the other big thing is awareness. I mean, most people haven't heard of Noonan syndrome. That's generally true. So anything we can do that, you know, get something out there that people respond to look at is going to be going to be good news. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye. Bye.